There you guys or as i should say hey what's up you guys marty schwartz here uh hanging out from uh from my music man cave uh but also just in case you haven't uh seen me before you know i have a thing called marty music uh lots of guitar lesson stuff and uh you know i'm on youtube and all that but anyway i just want to give a huge shout out huge thank you there i go getting emails huge shout out huge thank you to uh gibson guitar for having me on uh, this live stream and another live stream that I, I'm so honored to do. So anyway, uh, the people from Gibson are helping me uh, moderate this stream. So if you guys have any uh, questions or comments, things that you'd like to know, feel free to ask and um, I will see them from the uh, moderators. Now, real quick, uh, this live stream, I'm gonna dedicate to talking about power chords. Um, and honestly, I don't think a power chord can sound better than on a Les Paul. Once again, shout out to Gibson. And uh, this Les Paul I'm playing right here is actually a 50s Les Paul standard. Um, and it's in tobacco burst. So you've got the uh, figured top mahogany uh, body. Um, and this is one of the newer... I, I, this is one of the new uh, 50s standards that they make. So what they did was they took all the best uh, characteristics in the 50s era of Les Pauls, and they took the best of all of that and put it into the new uh, 50s Les Paul standard. So that's what I've got here. Uh, one of the big things is, you know, it just feels like a solid, solid guitar. Um <laughs> with those great humbuckers. And then the other thing with the 50s that's different than some of the other models is you've got that uh, classic 50s neck, which is a little bit thicker than the tapered 60s neck. Um, but it just feels great under your hand. So once again, this is a new uh, 50s Les Paul standard. And that color is tobacco burst. Yes. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk about all things power chords for this. Um, last video, I talked about bar chords. Now we're gonna talk about power chords. At some point, hopefully, uh, we can shred some solos too. But the power chord is the sound of rock. Um, and for instance, Edison from Instagram, and what's up you guys on Instagram there? Uh, my tripod is holding together a little better this time. But Edison from Instagram says, what tips do you have for a mediocre guitarist? Well, I think this power chord lesson is going to fit right in with that because um, you can get so much out of them. But, uh, yeah, I don't think you should let any level that you're at hold you back, you know, and get the enjoyment out of it and uh, keep playing. Mediocre is good. Mediocre is good. Okay, so power chords, ultimately what they are, uh, it's it just makes up – two notes sometimes they're repeating um but it's called a there's a root and also what's called the fifth um actually and when you play the notes individually it sounds like this when you play them together it gives you that rock sound now what's missing from like a regular major or minor chord is what's called the third now power chords don't have a third the third is what gives a chord it's tonality like you need a third in there and it's a relationship to the no other notes but you need a third in there to say whether it's major or minor but when you have a power chord there's no third it's a very clean sounding chord which you know rock guitarists love 
for, um, you know, they love the power, you know, the power chord thing for rock. They love it for distortion. It actually um, isn't as uh, muddy sounding when you just play roots and fifths. So a great one to start with, and we're gonna take our index finger and we're gonna use the very tip, the very tip of our index finger. And a great first power chord is the E power chord. I know you guys out there are, are at different, different levels, but I'm gonna start at ground zero and then we'll build up, okay? So let me talk about that E power chord because you hear it so much. One, there's great metal and rock songs that literally just chug along on the open E string with nothing else, not even a chord. Like you get a lot of distortion going. And so that's not even a chord. So what we can do is add a beautiful fifth to that open root and it's gonna be the second fret of that A string. Now, if you use the very tip of your finger for it, you get that. And what, and even in a kind of lazy way, you can let the rest of your index finger lightly touch. Now, I'm not barring it down, I'm not pressing down hard. I'm using the tip of my finger on that note, that second fret A string, but then letting my index finger relax across the rest of it. So it helps mute those other strings. Now, if I just kind of aim for the top string and get a little bit of that second note in there. You get that. Now, uh, David from YouTube, I'm getting your comments coming in. Uh, David from YouTube says, what are my thoughts on inverted power chords like a C5 over G? Do you use them? And Cody from Facebook, tips on string skipping and sweeping. Oh, those are two different topics there. But I will try and get to David's comment here first because it's related to our power chords. Let me first talk about the E power chord, though, and then I'll get to the inverted power chord. And if you guys don't know what David means, I'm going to show you. How about that? But let's just start easy with the E power chord. <laughs> takes a little practice, but even if I strum the entire guitar, the only notes that are ringing out for me are the open E and the second fret of the A string. And that's from letting my index finger just kind of lightly rest on the other strings, not pressing down like that. And so what's cool is you get to the A power chord and all you have to do is just move it over. So put your index finger on the second fret of the D string and play the open A string with that. And a cool tip is, once again, you're using the tip of your index finger, but now it's on that second fret D string. Once again, I'm letting my index finger mute the other strings. But here's a tip with that A power chord, and I use this a lot. I don't want you to think about it too much, but you should eventually try and find this way into your technique with the A power chord, is my thumb is muting, just, just by kind of resting, is muting that E string. So once again, I'm only hearing basically two notes. But if I strum the entire guitar, everything else is being muted. So a good starting point is to go back to the E power chord. And if you let the strings vibrate under your, your uh, strumming hand, you get that um, chunky, uh, well, it's called palm muting, but you get that kind of, you know. So that's with the meat, without it which is good too, but you get that really nice rhythm sound. And so you can chug along on that and then try and switch to the A power chord. That thumb comes up, the index finger rolls over.
But the the final little thing to add there, and it kind of, it, you know, it definitely comes from the blues, is um, you have the E power chord. You've got the A power chord. But you add the third fret on the E string and you use your middle finger, this one, use this one, it's hiding under here. Um, you hit the third fret of that E string in between the E and the A power chord. So you have E power chord, you got the A power chord, but you add this and you can even bend it just a little bit, just a nudge. See, my eye goes like that, that's how much. Just a nudge, just a nudge in between. And you get, you know, a huge part of ACDC and Led Zeppelin's sound. Um, check it out. When you're on the A power chord, you can actually add your middle finger to the third fret of the A or the E string, and you get sounds like this. Now it gets a little bit harder when you play roots along the string and you have to play two finger power chords. So I'm gonna talk about that, but um, but if you're a beginner, a place you wanna start is with that E power chord, A power chord. And then if you can get those even just semi clean, adding that third fret of the E string. So we've started talking about that E power chord, the A power chord. And when I say it comes from the blues, if I get clean here, all the stuff I'm about to play actually comes from the power chord, or you can reverse engineer it and say that all the power chords come from the thing I'm about to play. All this. Let me get to a couple of questions and if you guys are just tuning in uh i'm marty from marty music and i'm talking about power chords i'm also answering your questions um and a huge shout out to gibson and once again people are, are, are always chiming in on what the actual make and model and i am playing a uh, les paul uh, 50s standard in tobacco burst and what a beautiful burst it is Oh yeah, look at that. I'm, I'm feel very fortunate to be able to play this guitar, and it feels so great. Um, and also, you guys, I've already talked about some concepts with power chords, and I know you guys have different, you know, or different uh, levels. Some of you are more advanced, some of you are more beginner, um, but these are great fundamentals. Now, if you're more advanced and you were watching what I was just talking about. I think a nice thing for you to do would be to maybe take that in, you know, take the information um, and then teach someone, you know, maybe you can use this to help teach someone if, if you're super advanced to these techniques. Um, it's always great to pass on this kind of stuff that you've learned and help other people. Uh, okay, so we got a few questions here. Uh, I still got Cody from Facebook asking uh, about string skipping 
and sweeping, um, which is not, you know, fully related to the topic of power chords, um, but, uh, and you know, it's, it's also not like my strength either. And there's different kinds of sweeping. There's like jazz sweeping there's more shred sweeping. And then the string skipping concept um, where you're skipping over strings to hit notes. There's a lot to dig in there. So I might have to go back to that one. But Cody, thank you for your support. Also, thanks for uh, watching this on the uh, Gibson Facebook page. Oh, also real quick, these will this will be archived later. So if you need to go back when the stream's done, you can go back and, and anything you missed, you can go back and watch it. All right, so we've got uh, Samuel from YouTube. How do I, uh, uh, he says, how do you approach descending lick runs when improvising? I get tangled. I feel like the descending licks actually tend to be a little easier technically than the ascending licks. He means going down. But the thing I can't emphasize enough, man, uh, and Samuel, thank you for watching. Uh, it's that minor pentatonic extended run. So I have tons of videos on that, whether it's Marty Music, the website, or my YouTube channel. Tons of stuff on there. But if you like program your muscle memory, so in other words, there's this uh, minor pentatonic extended scale that I have people play all the time. So if I was an A minor, and here's the thing, I'm not going to break it all down right now. There's videos on it that you can look up, but the concept is you have the A minor pentatonic, but then you have a way, the little extensions below and above it. So I call these like, you know, little couch, you can call them couch exercises. You know, you're sitting on the couch, let's say you're not even, not even plugged in and you can just run that extended scale. I mean, I've gotten so much out of it. You know, I can be talking to you, I'm running it, I'm not even plugged in, I'm watching the new episode of Mandalorian, which actually I watched right before this, and it, I thought it was awesome. Um, but uh, Por Ejemplo, uh, for example, ascending and descending that over and over as muscle memory programming, um, like when you're just busy with something else, then when it's time to play or improvise, that work you put into to just – that programming, it'll really pay off. Um, so that's my answer to that. Pork from Instagram, how do I become a legend like yourself? <laughs> well, not have a silly laugh like that, that's for sure. I wanna thank um, Paige, uh, who's helping out from Gibson uh, for actually choosing that comment. That was just to make me feel good. So thank you so much for that, Porg. Um, but I will answer your question uh, humbly. All I've done is tried to uh, – this whole – Matt, the whole thing started with me uh, loving guitar. And then when I was in my early 20s, I was able to pay my rent by playing in a, in a like, professional kind of nightclub cover band out of college. And the fact that I didn't have to go get a job and I could pay my rent and stuff, uh, that was, like – that was it. I just tried to keep doing that. And then next thing I know, you know, over 20 years later, just still trying, just trying to pay my bills with guitar and being creative and navigate through that. I ended up doing the YouTube thing, you know, it's just crazy. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Joshua from Facebook says, taught a couple of my friends how to play guitar. I usually just uh, resort to just watch Marty. Joshua, very kind of you, my friend. Thank you. I really, really do appreciate that. It's so nice. And then we've got Scott from Facebook. Why does strumming upward sound so different from downstrokes? Hmm. Well, it could be the angle, the angle of the pick. You know, it 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 strikes at typically a different angle going up. Um, but just like anything that you struggle with on guitar or anything else, you gotta make it, you gotta play it and work it where it doesn't sound great to then eventually have it sound a little less not great and a little less not great until, hey, that doesn't sound bad. You have to like face the things, especially the things you're not good at, your weaknesses, right? You gotta tackle your weaknesses. Um, okay, so anyway, I wanna talk about power chords just a little more. Uh, a couple power chord hacks, or not even hacks, but just things that I didn't think about till I have been playing guitar a really long time. And I just think they're cool and they're related to power chords. Hack number one, 
the open chords, E major, D major, A major, G major, C major. Let's start with those. Those all, all those chords I said major, you know, C major, A major, D major, E major, etc. When you say major, it means there's a third. I, I mentioned that earlier. There's a note in the chord that makes it major or minor, and that's called the third. Now, when you have these classic open chords, you do have thirds in there. But what you can do is you can take that classic open shaped chords that you learn maybe on acoustic. I learned on acoustic first. I don't say you have to, but like for instance, a G major chord. I've got my pinky on the third fret high E, ring finger on the third fret of the B. And you got that open G and D. None of those are the third of the chord. But when you get to that second fret A string, that's the third. And you hear the third, like the, a classic example would be like the Beatles, like uh, uh, that second one. Uh, that's the root. Uh, that's the third. Uh, that's the fifth. So you take that third out uh, to the fifth. Uh, you get a clean power chord. So what you can do with the G chord is mute that A string. So in other words, you're just lightly touching it. So even though you see my finger there, I'm not hitting that note, I'm muting it. Like that. And so all the classic open chords, you can mute the third and you basically get the way ACDC plays chords. So you got that G, you got the C chord, you mute that middle finger note. Here it is with the third. Here it is muting the third. And then with that D major chord, you mute the high E. Instead of, you, you, you just mute it, you lightly touch it. We already did it with the A power chord and the E power chord, but you can, with the E power chord, for instance, you can mute that G string with your index finger, but still let the B and high E ring out. So if you take, uh, you know, G, C, and D, with the thirds muted, you get stuff like this. All right, so a beautiful hack. I didn't even know that's like how ACDC was doing it, um, at least most of the time. You're just muting those thirds, but you still get that some of the open strings in there. So, so I do really like that. Um, okay, so another another cool hack is taking the full bar chord. Like, let's do G. Now, I've heard Green Day do this a lot. I believe it's even Billy that does this, but you can take a full major G major bar chord. And just like I did on the E, where I'm muting that G string, you can do it with these bar chords. So you're pressing all the way down. Everything's pressed down except that middle finger on the G string. And they're just really clean, especially with overdrive. Thank 
All right, I got a question. Uh, oh, okay, two questions. Thomas from Facebook. What's a good tuning for scales, chords versus major chords? Tuning for scales, chords versus major chords. Mm, not sure about that question. I'm going to go to another one here. Mike from Facebook. Do I like reading music or tab? Um, well, most guitar player, most guitar players don't read music. Um, also there's, you know, really honestly reading music will make you a better musician. Um, I went to music school in college. It was a long time ago, over 20 years ago now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you know, you had to understand how to read music then, but it's like a muscle. And I have like, even as a professional musician, personally, I haven't had to read music too much. If I'm looking up like official music to learn of a song or, I mean, almost everything I do is by ear, but if I'm, if I'm like wanting to learn something from, um, from reading it, I like the sheet music with the tab as well. The tab is the quickest way to see where to put your fingers, right? Um, but tabs don't tell you the rhythm of the notes. And yeah, there's, you know, you have to learn that skill. But if I see tabs with the notation, that's my preferred. Um, however, as far as learning guitar, um, I really would recommend you learning from listening and playing a lot more than looking at tabs. And I'm not saying tabs are bad, but um, I spent probably my first decade of learning guitar barely looking at a tab, taking guitar lessons and playing with other musicians is, is what I did. And I know, but this is also pre-internet. So you got a lot more resources out there. Okay. Uh, Chuck from Facebook says, what Les Paul is that? Well, you're in luck, Chuck. Good luck, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Um, this is one of the new Les Pauls. It's a, a, stand, a 50s standard Les Paul. So what they did was they took all the, all the best uh, traits of the 50s decade for Les Paul, and they put all the best traits into this new 50s Les Paul standard. So I love it. You got to check them out. All you have to do, you can just go straight to gibson.com and you'll see this exact guitar and this is the tobacco sunburst but man to, to, to play power chords nothing no power chords sound better than on a les ball that's just my opinion but also fact <laughs> um okay herbert from youtube says, how do you like the 50s les paul and have you tried the 60s well if you see me leaning over there uh, yeah, right there. That's a, uh, like maybe like a 2015 Les Paul, um, that's based more on the sixties. I actually prefer the new fifties, um, style. And that's just, you know, like I said, I have both. Right. So what happened was when I was in Nashville, um, I was shooting some content there cause that's where my, my team is as well as Gibson shout out. Shout out to Gibson once again. Also shout out to my team at Made in Network. But they actually loaned me this guitar. I guess officially it is still still a loan. But they loaned it to me for a session. And I just fell in love with it. And it wasn't until like four or five months later that they actually sent it over here so I could keep playing it. Um, so I, I used this in a bunch of lessons and sessions way back. Um, not quite a year ago, but it's approaching. And I just fell in love with the guitar, the way it sounded. I was playing it through a, a like a Friedman or something, but you know, just cranking it and playing power chords and like Led Zeppelin, and it, it just I just couldn't get enough. So I prefer the the fifties. Um, John from Facebook, what other instruments do I play? Well, guitar was something I picked up later in my life, like when I was about eighteen. So once I realized that actually it wasn't as hard to me as I thought it was. I had like mental blocks about it because I had a bad teacher. Once I realized, oh, oh man, this is actually pretty, this is coming pretty easy to me. Once I started playing guitar, it was hard for me to play other instruments because 
I just kept excelling so fast on guitar that I just wanted to put all my time into it. But the instrument that got me playing music with other people that led to me playing guitar was harmonica. So I was just kind of jamming on blues harmonica. And then that led me to start learning some chords from my friends and then start really getting into uh, playing guitar. I had to take piano lessons in college. And once again, I kind of fudged my way through it and I didn't practice. It was bad of me, bad, bad student. Um, but it was because I wanted to go back to my dorm room or whatever and play practice guitar more. I just was obsessed with it. So a little bit of pay piano lessons that didn't stick, guitar, bass, ukulele, you know, like the stringed instruments, ukulele, just a little bit, um, harmonica. But really, I, I consider myself a guitar player, a guitar player who dabbles in some other instruments. Um, even my bass playing, you know, is like a bass player's, or, or sorry, a guitar player's survival guide to playing bass. Um, uh, Michael from Facebook says, what is a guitar tab? Tab is short for tablature, and it's uh, just a written form where uh, it's like shorthand written form on where you put your fingers on a guitar to play songs. Um, it's six lines representing the six strings of the guitar and then numbers along which represent the frets. So that's what tab is. If you were to Google guitar tab, you will see what it, what I'm talking about. Um, but it's it's like shorthand guitar language, um, shows you where to put your fingers. Um, Brian from Facebook, what string gauge do I use on my Les Pauls? I think right now on this guitar, actually there's nines right now on it. And that was just my own experiment. I've always played 10 gauge strings, um, you know, 10 gauge strings my whole life of playing guitar and only one string change. I just wanted to, you know, I see these video videos where they're like, oh, I changed string gauge and it blew my mind. Um, so I just tried nines on this just, just to see like what it felt like. And I really don't feel a huge difference. So I still think 10 gauge is like, the, the go-to gauge for strings. I'll probably, when, when these strings wear out, which they're getting close, I'll probably, probably put tens back on. Um, it's high from Instagram. How do I do vibrato? And what's up you guys on Instagram? Thanks for hanging out. You guys. Um, also we're wrapping up, uh, but these videos will be archived. So if you're just coming in right now, you're going to be able to watch this on all the Gibson, uh, platforms, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram on Gibson. So don't feel free to go back and watch that. Um, okay. How do I do vibrato? That's a lifelong journey. And that might be a good topic for another uh, video. It's a really good question. It's also a very personal different, you know, different players have more personal sounds in their vibrato. Like BB King is one first one that comes to mind. So there's a lot of technique about that, but hopefully we can come back and, Talk about that at a, at a later time. All right, another question. Jeff from Facebook, he says, can you show spend a moment showing us your warm-up drills before a performance? Um, typically, the performance of, uh, performances I've done in the last uh, two years, I'm usually traveling and I gotta get somewhere and then we gotta jump on stage and this player's from this area, this player's from this area, it's all thrown together. So what I'm typically doing is I'm just going through the parts of the uh the songs that we have to play and then the other thing is like i talked about this earlier but you could not go wrong playing the extent the minor pentatonic extended scale up and down <laughs> play music as a warm-up. I don't do the uh, like chromatic things like Don't do too much of that. Um, I, I just play 
I just play. And if it's before a performance, I just play the riffs, man, you know, from, from the stuff that I'm about to perform. Um, and anyway, if anyone, I really appreciate the great feedback on the uh, Fortunate Sun cover I did on Marty Music. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, I appreciate you checking it out. It was really fun to do. All right, last, last question. And then we're gonna wrap this up, you guys. And I really uh, appreciate you spending some time with me. And shout out to Gibson once again for inviting me. It's uh, an honor, absolute honor. I said this last week, but it's true. Like, you know, I come home from middle school and turn on, immediately turn on MTV. And Guns N' Roses was like, you know, the biggest band at the time. And, you know, I'd sit there watching Slash shred. I didn't even play guitar yet. So to sit here now, um, you know, with the brand Gibson, you know, the best guitar brand doing a stream or working with them, it's it's, it's uh, very cool. Very cool. So I want to thank them again. All right. Last question. Edward from Facebook. Who are, this is a question to me. Who are your three favorite guitar players of all time? My three favorite impossible impossible to answer but i'll do my best under pressure uh, i'm gonna go hendrix yeah um and for me favorite means like ones i've listened to the most so so i'm gonna say hendrix um i love john schofield especially the stuff night like the late 90s on where he collaborated with some younger musicians playing like groove stuff uh with modesky martin wood all that like i just love that playing um, and then I'll, man, the third one, can I, I mean, I don't even, there's so many, it's, it'll be hard to say the third one, but so I said Schofield and Hendrix. So then, yeah, let's go to BB King. I'm going to say BB King. I think that's a really good one. I mean, I mean, like Derek Truck is probably the, the best living guitar player, it, like for me. But he's more my age, so I want to think about the legends, right? So there's all these categories I would have to start dividing it all up into. Um, but anyway, we're going to wrap this up, folks. I want to thank you again. So don't worry if you're just chiming in right now or you came in the last few minutes. All of this content will be archived on Gibson, uh, their Facebook page, their YouTube channel, and their Instagram. So you can come back and watch. Um, I just really appreciate your support regardless. You know, I, my YouTube channel is called Marty Music. You can head over there um, if you haven't checked anything out there. Um, I appreciate that support. And I've been playing the uh, newer 50s standard Les Paul in Tobacco Burst. Huge shout out once again to Gibson for letting me play this and also for inviting me to collaborate on some of these uh, live sessions. So uh, without further ado, I'm just gonna do one more jam. I gotta like, I feel like I have to end it with a little jam. And then uh, and then we'll get on with our weekend. Hope you guys have a great uh, Halloween, you know, if, you, if you're digging on that, or just a great weekend with friends and family and guitar, obviously. All right, I was this video, this uh, stream was all about power chord. So I'm gonna play a little power chord action and then we're gonna get out of here. All right, here we go. <laughs> What can I do where it sounds almost like something? I'm gonna try that. Thank you. 
Thanks a lot, you guys, for hanging out. Shout out to Gibson Guitars. And uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon.